Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to The Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C, and we're going to do some more A&P today. Specifically, we're going to look at the thoracic cage. That would be officially the ribs and the sternum. So, let's do it. So, here we see the thoracic cage uh, in all of its glory. Uh, they will be composed of all 12 thoracic vertebrae, which we've seen in a previous talk, if you want to go back and check that out. So each thoracic vertebra will be attached to a pair of ribs, and that's usually how we discuss the ribs, is pairs. There will be 24 total ribs. This is true in both males and females. Each pair attaching to a thoracic vertebrae, part of the vertebral column. The sternum is this dark blue thing that I'm putting a red outline around. Uh, some people call it the breast bone or the chest bone. It's got three little parts we'll see in a minute. Costal, again, if you see the word costal, you can assume you're talking about the ribs. Uh, it's not coastal, although a lot of people call them coastal. Coastal would have an A in there, and that would refer to, of course, the coast. Uh, costal cartilages refer to something to do with the ribs. So costal cartilages would be here and here and here, where I'm drawing these little red marks. Attaching the actual ribs here, where I put an R, 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 to the sternum. Of course, the function is to protect vital organs. Uh, in here, we would have, just to make this even messier, we'd have a lung over here, we'd have a lung over here somewhere, we'd have a heart in between, have a respiratory diaphragm somewhere in here. So, well, of course, those are vital, but the argument is, well, there's also vital organs down here where I'm drawing the X, right? You got a lot of tubes associated with eating and digesting your food. Those are vital. You must do that. So the question is, why doesn't the rib cage go all the way down like the vertebrae go all the way down? Well, the answer is simple. It's for movement. Uh, we sacrifice a little bit of protection there by putting some musculature over it uh, instead of bone. And we have it so we can, you know, turn around, sit up, make complex movements uh, that we couldn't do if our rib cage went all the way down to our pelvis. Of course, when we get to the muscle section, we'll look at where muscles will attach and where they will originate. And intercostal muscle would say it all, inter meaning in between, and costal referring to the ribs. So when we get to the muscles chapter, you will see, and I'll just kind of illustrate how this would look, you'd see some muscles in between the ribs, and they're going to come in little sections like this, one by one by one, and uh, they're going to help us well, basically perform some of the functions of respiration when we get to uh, that chapter a long way down the road. The sternum itself is made of three parts. You can see the bony parts here broken apart. The first part, I'll put an M here, is the manubrium. And it will, as it says, attach to the clavicles or the collarbones that we'll talk about in the next talk. And the first two pairs of ribs. The main part of it, is just simply called the body. And you see all these little grooves in here that will help articulate ribs. And it says over here in the text, they will articulate ribs two through seven. Not directly though, we're gonna see those costal cartilages come in there to make the complete connection. We'll see that in just a moment. Down at the bottom, I'll put a little X on him, this time because that is his letter. Some people say xiphoid process. I say xiphoid process because that's the way I heard it when I was younger. So the xiphoid process kind of looks like a little sword or a little dagger pointing down. Now, it will be an important part, uh, again, for attaching muscles. So we don't get to see those details in this section. But say the, the muscles that make your abs uh, will attach here to let us do sit-ups. And your respiratory diaphragm will also attach to the xiphoid process. It will remain cartilaginous until you become about the age of 40. And then after the age of 40, it slowly ossifies until it becomes a complete bone, like in this picture here. Okay, the ribs themselves. I've put a couple here on either side, so just mirror this whenever I uh, label. The head is pretty obvious right there. There's a head. I'll put an H for head. And of course, the neck will be right below it, where necks usually are, right underneath the head. So there's the head and the neck of the rib. This, by the way, is where the vertebrae would be. And if I can like really, really cheat and just kind of draw an oval here and call this a vert. And I know this is going to be a, a thoracic vertebrae, so I'll put T-vert, so we know that's a thoracic vertebra. There's kind of how it'll attach, even though it's not realistically drawn at all. So this is the posterior end of the ribs is where you find the head. The anterior end, which we'll get to in a minute, is at the other end. 
There's a lump here coming up right past the neck, and it will be called a tubercle, and it's got on its side, which is often hard to see, so I'll draw the tubercle first. There's the, the lump of the tubercle. And then here somewhere, even though it's often hard to see, so I'll just kind of fake it and draw it in there so we, we can pretend it's really obvious. That's the articular facet, right? That's the part that's actually going to connect with uh, some of the T-vert. So there's where most of the terms come into play is at that posterior end, head, neck, articular facet, and tubercle. You can zoom along here and get to, well, this curvy part is often referred to as the angle of the rib. And then the rest of it out here somewhere, and I don't know exactly know where it is, but somewhere in here, this is referred to the body or the shaft. And then when you get to this end of it, of course, this is the end that will approach the sternum. So we will call that usually the sternal end. It's going to be the anterior end. And I can just sketch that in here so we don't have any confusion, if my pen will allow me. That's the anterior end of the rib. The posterior part is attached to the vertebrae. Here's a few images I've plucked out to show you how the ribs would attach to the thoracic vertebrae, and these are called vertebrocostal articulations, again, where the vertebrae meet the ribs. The ribs themselves, of course, we usually talk about them as pairs. Uh, all 12 pairs that we've just shown you have some sort of posterior attachment, that is the head of the rib, which is the posterior part, attaches with the thoracic vertebrae. So when it comes to name the posterior attachment of X rib, it's easy. They all posteriorly attach directly to the T vertebrae, the thoracic vertebrae. However, when it comes to the anterior method of attachment, that's when you get into some of the trouble. So the first seven pairs are called true ribs because they will attach directly to the sternum. Now, not bone to bone. They'll attach with costal cartilages directly to the sternum. So I'm going to illustrate this on the image. So here's rib number one. Here's rib number two. Here's number three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Notice that they do direct anterior attachment to the sternum via that articular cartilage, that costal cartilage. Six goes straight up, direct attachment. Seven has to bend a little bit to make it there, but it does actually go all the way to the sternum. So pairs one through seven are called true ribs because they have an anterior attachment in that they directly attach via costal cartilage to the sternum. Okay, I'm gonna change my color here. We get to the next set, which, well, there's only, you know, eight, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Let me label them real quick. There's 8. There's 9. Let me change that color and do that again. There's 8. There's 9. Here's 10. You can barely see them, but there's 10. 11 is here. And 12 is here. Now, these little things here and here sticking out, those are just those process, those transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae so don't get fooled by those so here's the the rules if you are pair 8 through 12 you're called a false rib that's kind of like your default answer if pairs 1 through 7 were trues then 8 through 12 are the falses anteriorly they have two different options though they could attach indirectly and i'll show you what that means over here in the picture if you look at rib 8 notice how it's cartilage, and I'm just kind of scribbling it here, merges with seven. It doesn't go all the way to the sternum. Same thing with nine. It has some costal cartilage, but it merges with eight and then merges with seven. Same with 10. It will have a little bit of cartilage that attaches to the one above it, not a direct trip all the way to the sternum. So we call this indirect attachment. Right? It does attach to the sternum, but it does it using the cartilage of the rib above it. So 8, 9, and 10 are false ribs that attach indirectly. Or, as you see down with pairs 11 and 12, again, here's 11 and here's 12, they don't attach at all anteriorly. They have no anterior attachment. So we're going to call those floating ribs, pairs 11 and 12. Yes, they're still called false ribs, but they are more specifically floating ribs because they have no anterior attachment or articulation. All right.
Did you enjoy some ribs? If you did, appreciate you watching. Check out some more if you want to learn more about anatomy. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.